Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today, we're back with a game optimization video for Ubisoft's latest release, Tom Clancy's The Division 2. The last optimization guide we did was for Metro Exodus. We know there's been a few other titles released between then and now, such as Far Cry New Dawn, Anthem, and Devil May Cry, but been a bit busy around here, so this is unfortunately the, the next title that we've been able to get to. And boy, is this a prime candidate for an optimization video. That's not because The Division 2 runs poorly or seems unoptimized. In fact, Ubisoft's Snowdrop engine seems to run really well on PC. The game has fantastic graphics and loads of excellent PC-specific features, including full HDR support and even niche stuff like eye tracking. Instead, it's the absolute multitude of graphics options you get in this game. The list seems to go on forever and seems quite daunting at first glance. Luckily, there are basic presets here, but still nothing is hidden away from view in this game, like was the case with Metro. So as usual, the goal of this video is to explore nearly every quality setting in the game to show you guys both a visual quality comparison between the different options as well as the performance impact. As we'll go, we'll be giving some recommendations on what I think delivers the best balance between visuals and performance, which we then summarize into our own custom preset that I'll go through at the end. The hope is to give you guys more performance without sacrificing too much from graphics quality. Our usual notes for these videos apply here as well. I'm using my Core i9 9900K test rig overclocked to 5 gigahertz with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. We use this system to remove all CPU bottlenecks during testing. This is a GPU heavy game for most people, so it shouldn't end up being CPU limited. We've tested a range of GPUs for the performance numbers from both brands and in multiple performance categories, averaging out the results to give you a decent idea of how each setting scales. Our performance data comes from the game benchmark tool which runs over 90 seconds and I found to be pretty representative of in-game performance. Some benchmark tools can be a bit weird but at least from what I've played of the game this one is pretty good. We use a single benchmark run for every setting to give you a more general performance overview rather than simple frame rate spot checks that can over exaggerate the differences or show just worst case performance. This also means the performance data is not taken from the scene we use as an example to show the visual differences. The game captures you see throughout the video are taking using an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 at 4K. We recommend playing back this video at 4K because it can be a bit hard to spot the differences at YouTube's lower 1080p resolution and bitrate. Sometimes YouTube doesn't process these videos to 4K very quickly, so we're also going to provide a source quality video for our patrons where you can just download it right now in 4K. The first thing I want to discuss is DirectX 11 versus DirectX 12. You can play The Division 2 in either mode, and I found DirectX 12 to be slightly better overall. Average frame rates were marginally ahead with DirectX 11 with the latest drivers, but it's the large jump in 1% low performance that gives the nod to DX12 as it leads to a smoother, more stable experience. The other key option is the reduced input latency mode, which is enabled by default. Ubisoft says that turning this option off can lead to increased frame rates, but I didn't find that to be the case with the GPUs I've tested, so I suggest leaving this mode enabled. We'll kick things off here with the presets. There are four options, Ultra, High, Medium, and Low, which keeps things pretty simple. Most of the individual quality settings also have four modes, so as you step down each preset, the settings get a corresponding step down. However, even when using the ultra mode, some settings are not at their highest, and we'll mention why that might be the case a bit later. Like the presets in a lot of games, there's not a huge difference between ultra and high. Ultra gives you slightly better draw distance for objects and textures, and slightly higher shadow and reflection resolutions. It's the increased draw distance that I noticed the most. And then moving from high down to medium, again, each of these areas drops off a bit further, especially draw distance, while also introducing noticeable reductions in shadowing and ambient occlusion. With that said, overall, the difference between ultra and medium is quite respectable. It's not a huge downgrade by any means. Where it really falls away is with low, which has noticeably worse reflection and shadow quality, much lower draw distances for all elements, lower lighting quality, lower ambient occlusion, and also a lower render resolution. Low is the only preset that sets the render scale below 100, in this case using a level of 75, so we're also seeing upscaling at this preset. I wouldn't recommend it unless you have an entry-level rig. 
In terms of performance, we're seeing good scaling here. There is nearly a 3x difference in frame rate between the ultra and low presets, which suggests that those with entry-level systems will be able to achieve good performance here. That said, a lot of this performance comes from the resolution scale. Moving from ultra down to high sees a near 30% performance improvement, and I suspect that will be worth it for many gamers struggling to hit that 60 to 80 FPS range. For example, my RTX 2080 at 4K high delivered a 60 FPS experience, but ultra did not. And with the visual changes there, high is definitely the way to go. Moving down to medium gives a near 60% improvement over ultra. And again, it's worth considering for reduced visual quality. Really, all these presets are good depending on your hardware, though I feel high is perhaps the best balance. It's also worth mentioning that as a lot of settings here impact memory usage, lowering the preset can give larger gains on more constrained cards. On an RX 570 4GB, for example, at 1080p, shifting from ultra to medium was an 80% increase rather than 60% on higher end GPUs. Shadow quality is a simple setting in the Division 2. Each increase delivers higher resolution shadows with better draw distances. By default, the Ultra preset uses high shadows. Bumping that up to very high does present a small increase to sharpness. But it's when moving down to medium or low that things start to fall away, especially resolution on the low mode. Here you will often see jagged shadow edges. In terms of performance, it's not hard to see why the developers have chosen high for the Ultra preset, as switching to very high causes a 6% loss to performance for only a minor visual improvement. There's also no real difference between high and medium, so my suggestion here is to use high, with low and its 2% improvement reserved for entry-level gamers. The spot shadow setting refers to how many shadows are rendered from point lights in the game, such as street lamps. I could only spot a significant difference between the medium and low modes, with low removing a lot of shadows in night scenes. Considering both high and medium also deliver roughly the same performance, this is a setting I'd leave on high. The spot shadow resolution setting is much more noticeable, which, surprise surprise, affects the sharpness of spot shadows. Ultra is the clear best option here, with each reduction in setting causing blurrier shadow edges. Even turning it down just from ultra high makes a pretty noticeable difference. If you have the performance to spare, Ultra does deliver noticeably better shadows for around a 2-3% performance penalty. If you're squeezing every last drop, I think high is the way to go. Contact shadows is another form of shadowing that allows an object to shadow itself or other objects in close proximity. As the setting requires a restart, it was very difficult to get a good visual comparison between each mode. However, not to worry because it doesn't have a significant performance impact, so I'd keep it on all high here. Sharpening is a cosmetic feature, but I just wanted to verify this wasn't using some sort of anti-aliasing. The good news is it's not, so you can change this setting and it will not impact performance as it's purely post-process sharpening. It does deliver a noticeable visual change though. The zero mode is quite blurry, while 10 is perhaps a bit too sharp, with 7 being the default. I think 7 or 8 gives the best balance of sharpness with jaggy reduction. Particle detail, again, quite hard to get a comparison here due to the dynamic nature of particles. However, it seems this setting only affects weapons particles, such as explosions, rather than leaves and so on, which seemed unaffected moving from ultra down to low. As there's no significant performance difference between each mode, I'm sticking with ultra here. Ubisoft does love to use volumetric fog in their games across their game engines. It's been known to cause heavy performance hits in Assassin's Creed, which uses the Anvil Next engine, and Watch Dogs 2, which uses Disrupt. It's the same story with the Division 2 and its Snowdrop engine here. The visual differences between the four modes are there. You get slightly denser and more realistic fog with the ultra and high modes, compared to a more modest implementation with medium and low. But the performance hit is huge, dropping from ultra to high delivers a 10% improvement, and then ultra to medium is more like 20%. Given medium level fog still looks good and doesn't affect the atmosphere of the game too much, and the performance difference between medium and low is quite small, I drop from medium here to instantly gain 20% to your performance. It's pretty crazy, but this is the most intensive setting in the game. Reflection quality is split into two modes. The standard mode named reflection quality delivered no performance improvement in my testing, so high is best to use there. It's with a local reflection quality that you'll start to see differences and performance gains as this setting dictates how well water and other surfaces reflect nearby objects. Every option aside from off here seems to use a modified version of screen space reflections that doesn't suffer from horrible artifacting when your character obscures reflections. So it's a pretty good implementation here. 
Reflections still disappear when you shift around the camera when they shouldn't, but yeah, overall, it's pretty impressive. Moving to off doesn't remove reflections entirely either. It merely switches to using reflection maps, which look decent, but aren't very accurate. That said, I'm still pleased that even when you turn off screen space reflections, you still are getting at least some form of this technique. The difference between the four screen space modes is purely down to resolution. Overall, the reflections are quite muted even on the very high mode, but this becomes more apparent shifting to say medium or low. Given that moving from just very high down to high sees a 7% performance improvement for a small visual quality increase, I feel that's a great choice to make. You won't see as high gain shifting any lower until you switch this mode off entirely, which is another big boost. I'd still only recommend off as an option for mid-range or entry-level gamers though. Vegetation quality has three modes, but it's only the low mode that I spotted a difference between medium or high. The low mode seems to remove a number of vegetation shadows that are present at the higher modes, but overall the density of vegetation isn't really changed across all of the modes. Given it only delivers a 1% performance improvement shifting from high to low, I'd keep this on high and enjoy more depth to the vegetation. Subsurface scattering, again, I find it quite hard to spot the visual changes here outside of cutscenes. You gain about 1% to performance if you switch it off, but for me, I'll just basically leave this one on. Anisotropic filtering is the same affair in The Division 2 as other games, although bizarrely, this is one of the few settings that requires a restart to change. Not sure what the reasoning behind that is. Uh, but 16x delivers the sharpest textures with the best draw distances at strange angles, but it's only when shifting down to 2x or 1x that the reduction in quality becomes noticeable. It's also where the performance impacts begin to kick in, with 2x delivering a surprisingly high 5% performance advantage over 16x, even on a high-end card. Given 2x does blur textures a fair bit, I'd stick to using 16x unless you're searching for a lot more performance. Parallax mapping is a simple setting that improves object depth, as the game says, without adding geometry. It's a low-cost version of tessellation that seems to work well in this game, providing a subtle improvement. In good news for those after the best performance, disabling it only delivers a 1% performance improvement, so it's not worth disabling. Ambient occlusion is used pretty subtly throughout The Division 2, you won't see any enormous changes between the four modes, and it's especially nice to see that even with a low mode, ambient occlusion isn't removed entirely. Instead, the main difference I spotted was a noticeably reduced ambient occlusion resolution with the medium and low modes, whereas the high and very high modes were quite similar. Given high is a 2% improvement over very high, it's a good change to make, while medium is suitable for lower end gamers. Depth of field is similar in this game to many others and doesn't see a performance impact in general gameplay. It's a similar cosmetic setting to the vignette mode, chromatic aberration mode, and lens flare in that there is no performance difference between on and off. Object detail is an interesting setting because it has granular control between 0 and 100, with 60 being the default for the ultra preset. I didn't test every individual option, there's 100 of them, so that would be pretty crazy, but I did check out 100, 60, 30, and 0. There isn't a significant difference between 100 and 60 in most situations, which explains again why Ultra defaults to 60. When you start dipping below 50, objects are removed from scenes and it does increase pop-in, so at 30 or 0 for example, moving around can see objects randomly appear. On most cards with a decent level of VRAM, jumping from 60 down to 0 does deliver a 5% improvement to average frame rates and nearly 8% to 1% low, so it is reasonably significant. But I found the pop-in really annoying, so my preference is to keep it on 60. With that said, those with a 4GB card or lower might need to turn it down, as you can see up to 20% gains on more constrained systems. The Division 2 has another setting that is very useful for memory constrained hardware called Extra Streaming Distance. This defaults to the maximum 10 with the Ultra preset and does improve pop-in as you move around, although again, it's very difficult to get a good comparison for this one. Lowering this to 5 delivers a 3% improvement on most cards with a decent level of VRAM, though pop-in increases so I wouldn't recommend it. Again, users with 4GB or lower cards can see more than a 10% improvement in reducing the setting, so it's worth experimenting with if you are on the lower end of the VRAM scale. Yep, there are more settings in this game, luckily only a handful more. Water quality is reduced when setting the game to either the medium or low modes, with a seeming reduction to the resolution of ripples and other interactions. I'd keep this one on high, given you only get a 3% improvement dropping it down to low, and low is a visual downgrade. Projected texture resolution is a setting I honestly couldn't figure out if it had any visual impact. It also didn't seem to have a massive performance impact, delivering 1% more performance going from 
512 to 128, and that wasn't high with VRAM constrained cards. Maybe this is for really entry level gamers? I kept it on 512, which is what the Ultra Mode uses by default. Next, we get down to high resolution sky textures, a very minor difference in sky and cloud quality between the two modes, with on looking slightly better as you might expect. No performance difference between the modes with a card that had a decent amount of VRAM, and it's only a small impact with a 4GB card. Terrain quality appears to mostly affect the quality of terrain textures, so high has the best terrain textures, with the other modes reducing the clarity of surfaces. Low also seemed to reduce geometry slightly. In any case, not a huge performance impact, so high is the best mode to use as you can continue to enjoy nice and crisp terrain surfaces. And that's all the individual quality settings in the Division 2 covered. There is great scope for optimization in this game for all PC gamers, whether you have a high-end card or something more entry-level. As a number of settings really help out entry-level cards in reducing VRAM usage, I feel two custom presets are worth recommending. A harbor quality option for those that want the best visual quality and have, say, 6 to 8 gigabytes of VRAM or more, and a hub performance option for more entry-level cards with 4 gigabytes of VRAM or less. Hub quality is very similar to the Ultra preset with a few notable changes. Dropping volumetric fog to medium recovers a ton of performance, as does switching local reflections to high. I also recommend high ambient occlusion. Those are the three key settings to change, and doing this delivers a 33% performance improvement over the Ultra preset for almost no visual downgrade. This is a much better option than the High preset, which turns down a lot of other settings that have no performance impact but reduce visuals. So our custom hub quality preset ends up looking better and performing slightly better as well. Hub performance adjusts several other things, most notably turning local reflections to off, water quality to low, and ambient occlusion to medium, which recovers more performance again. Then several other settings help improve performance through reducing memory usage, including reductions to object detail and streaming. Overall, for a card like the RX 570, this leads to a 70% improvement over Ultra, though visual quality is noticeably reduced, so depending on how entry-level your card is, you might want to turn some things back up while preserving the memory-reducing settings. There's really not a lot to complain about here though. Ubisoft has put in a lot of work to deliver a game that both looks great on high-end hardware while also running nicely on less powerful systems. Even the intensive settings aren't particularly outrageous except for volumetric lighting which is easy to correct. I think Snowdrop is one of the better engines Ubisoft have right now and that is showing with The Division 2. As well as being graphically impressive, the game seems pretty decent, so I'm looking forward to checking it out soon and playing it the whole way through to the end game. I think I might try it out solo, but you never know. I never played the first one as well, so that might have been a bit of a mistake. Anyway, that's it for this one. Hopefully this guide was useful because with so many graphics settings, it's taken a bit of time to put this one together. Consider subscribing for more graphics optimization videos, although the next guide may be a few months away looking at the game release schedule. Support us on Patreon to get cool perks like access to our Discord community, and I'll catch you in the next one.